Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you're doing awesome. I had a very, very productive day. I'm quite proud of my day. I did laundry. I went and got groceries. I went to Dollar General. I put everything up. And what else did I do? Oh, that might be it. That might be. Oh, I made chili. I made Frito pie. I've already had dinner. It's really good. I made homemade chili. I love to make chili. When I say I'm having Frito pie, I'm not opening a can of that chili that has fat in the meat. I'm not doing that. I make my chili from hamburger meat. And um, so that's what I had. That's what I made for dinner. It was really good. And um, hmm, I guess that's it. I oh, took the trash out too. So I just accomplished so much in one day. It was a good day. I hope you had an awesome day also. Today we're going to look at Psalms 27 and we're also going to look at my uh, quiet time, my Jesus always today. It was really good today. I thought it really fit with what's going on. And uh, anyway, I'd like to share it with you. I'd like to share it. Yes, I'd like to share it. I'd share it with you. Okay. That didn't sound right for a second. I don't know. I'm taking allergy medicine. Um, pretty much awake, but if I fall asleep, that's what I'm doing. Taking allergy medicine. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for all the many, many things that you do for us, God. We praise you for provision. We praise you for protection. We praise you because you are the great I am and you are the great Jehovah. You are from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You're caring and kind and compassionate and um, trustworthy. You are faithful, God, and you are patient. You want none to suffer. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray, we cry out for the lost. We just cry, God, that their eyes would be open and their ears would be open and their hearts would be open to truth, to your truth, God. And uh, we pray that they would be drawn to Jesus to be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray that you would, um, that they would remember their relationship with you, that they would return and repent and be reconciled, God. And we pray for all the disasters, God, all the many disasters. I was listening about the um, eruption, the volcano eruption, God, I was listening. So many people are involved in that, God. We just pray that you would meet their needs, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, that would be the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray for all the sick people, God. We just pray that you would heal their bodies. We pray for other disasters all over the world, God. We just pray that you would be with them. God, we just pray today, God, that the Holy Spirit would fall upon all generations, God. The Holy Spirit would lead all generations in truth. That God, our young ones would be prophesying, which they are, and that the older people would be prophesying, which they are. We just pray for more of that, God, in our nation, 
and all around the world, God, that your Holy Spirit, that people would feel your Holy Spirit guiding them and directing them into truth, God. We just pray for people that have lost loved ones, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And that they would feel your presence. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, I may have to go get my water. I did not bring it in here. Uh, I'll see if I can make it. But my throat sounds very uh, raspy. I may have to go and get it. Okay, Psalm 27. This is an exuberant declaration of faith. And this is a Psalm of David also. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, will I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. O oh God of my salvation, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, not the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wow, that's so good. Such a beautiful, beautiful psalm. Talking about who the Lord is to King David. And where King David finds his strength. And who hides King David. And... um where King David wants to be, he wants to dwell in the house of the Lord. He cries out to God. And he seeks God's face and he waits upon the Lord. Sometimes we have to wait. We don't ever want to wait, but sometimes we have to wait. We have to wait for all the circumstances to fall into place perfectly like God designed them to be. So Psalm 27, 1 through 3, the poet declared his confident faith. 
affirming the Lord as his light, salvation, and strength. God's presence provides the inner resources to overcome fear and difficult experiences. God's love even transcends the love parents have for their children. This psalm does not suggest abandonment by God, but rather the com committing of oneself to God in utter dependence upon Him. So God wants to be first. God wants to be first in our lives. Our children are important and they are blessings from God. But God wants to be first. God commands to be first in our lives. And I know a lot of people really struggle with that. But you have to put the Creator first before who He created. So He is the Creator of us. He is the Creator of our children and our grandchildren. But He is our Creator. So we have to put our Creator first. And you may or may not agree with me. That's what I get from the Bible. Now, I want to read my um, devotional today, which was so good. Because it talks about the righteous judgment of God. I will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in my truth. So God is going to judge us by his truth, not, not our truth or not the world's truth, by His truth. His truth is going to be the measure of His judgment. His righteousness will be the measure of His judgment. The promise is full of blessing and encouragement. It means that someday evil will be judged. That will be an awesome day. But a sad day too, because evil got the same choice we did, but they chose wrong. It means that someday my perfect justice will finally and forever prevail because you are my follower clothed in my own righteousness. You have nothing to fear, but those who refuse to trust me as savior have everything to fear. They have everything to fear. Someday time will run out in my wrath will be terrifying to all who persist in unbelief. They will even call to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the front throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I will judge everyone in my truth. The concept of absolute truth is widely opposed, yet it is nonetheless rock-solid reality. Unbelievers will eventually bump up against this certainty, whether they believe in it or not. For you and all believers, my truth is a firm foundation on which you can live and work, play and praise. This is good reason to sing for joy. So God's truth is the measurement that he will judge the world. By his righteousness in his truth, not the truths of the world. And I know many people will go, All right, this was Jesus Always. Jesus Always by Sarah Young. I love this book. I read it every day. I just thought that it really fit with a lot of what we see going on right now, which is. There's a lot of untruths that are out there. But my prayer is that God's truths will crush all the lies. That God's truth will rise up above the lies. And people will believe God's truth over the lies that they've been told. Over the lies of our enemy. Because our enemy is the father of lies. And his followers... Do the same. They lie. And many of the things that we have been 
given as truth in this world are not truth. So we need to stay on the side of truth because that is God's standard. God's standard is his truth and he's the one that's going to judge. He will be the judge. He knows all hearts. He knows all minds. He knows what we're going to do. He knows what we're going to choose. There will be many people in heaven, and you will be going, how in the world did they get to heaven? But maybe at the last second of their life, they cry out to God, and they ask for forgiveness. Well, the reward is the same for them. Their place in heaven is the same as ours, who have served God for years, not because we are slaves, but because we want to. We want to serve him. We want to we want to be a part of furthering the kingdom of God. And he calls us to. He calls us to Jesus calls us to go and to share with everyone his gospel. So we are called to do that too. We are called to serve. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the love and compassion of Jesus. Sometimes we may be the only example of Jesus that anybody sees, and we are not perfect. We struggle just like everybody else. Christians struggle just like everybody else, just because I'm a Christian does not mean that my life is perfect because it's not. I have many hurts in my heart that have been healed. I have many hurts that I'm going through right now. But I don't have to go alone. Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God, they guide me and they help me. And they help me see what's right and they help me see truth. They help me understand truth. And they keep me on the path of truth. We need to stay on the path with Jesus. It is narrow and there aren't a lot of people on it. But it leads back to God. And that is most important. That is the most important decision that we can make in our lives. Is to choose Jesus as our Savior. So how do I want to do this tonight? How about this? Can't really see it real well. YouTube people, so sorry. God's invitation into his heaven is what that says. God's invitation into his heaven. His heaven is his. It is not ours. It is our destination. It is our final destination. But only because of the grace of Jesus. Only because we have trusted Jesus as our Savior. That is our only way that we even get to go to heaven. So have you been invited? Has anybody ever invited you into God's heaven? The time is now to respond to his invitation. So here are some scriptures that go along with salvation. Of course, my eyes are going to start itching. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 We are not righteous that have called upon Jesus. The fact that we're not righteous is why we did call upon Jesus, because we need a Savior. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 God commandeth his love toward us in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 6 23. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14 6 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. So, his heaven is our reward. That is our reward for choosing Jesus as our Savior. It's living in heaven with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit forever. It is our forever home. Many people go, I want a forever home. Well, heaven is our forever home. We may have a home that we really like, that we really love, but it's it's just temporary. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And so I have this picture behind me on the left. This is the New Jerusalem coming down. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. So now my question for you is, do you want to accept this invitation to God's heaven? Do you want to accept the free gift of salvation that Jesus offers? So if you would like to do that, then repeat these words after me, and I will leave space in this prayer for you to repeat. Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Help me to praise and glorify you daily and help me to grow in my relationship with you daily through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome. Sorry. Welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name has now been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified. By God, through Jesus, his son. So if you want to grow closer, if you want to know more about Jesus, then start reading the Bible every day and start in Matthew so you can learn about Jesus, who he is, what he did. And uh, pray every day. Pray and praise. Praise. I used to do, used to listen to praise music while I do this, but... I keep forgetting to bring my other phone in here. 
All right, well, let me do God's blessing for you. My cat is over here asleep on my chair. She was behind me, but she got down. She doesn't want to be on the camera. Okay, number 6, 24 through 26 says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need some peace. Okay, I thought I didn't do a song share today. I just, I don't know, I had a busy day and I didn't get one done, but I've got to do something tonight because I'm trying to do every day and tomorrow is day 21. Today is day 20. So I'm going to do something later. Um, I had thought of a song this morning, but I don't know. I don't really know what song now. Um, I don't remember what that was because it's been so long ago since it was morning. So anyway, I will probably put one on after tonight. So, let me pray. Just a very blanket prayer. My hair, it's clean. That's about all I can say for it. It's like, I don't know. It looks really bad. It's clean. It's still a little wet, too. I keep trying to dry. I like it to dry naturally. I don't. I use a blow dryer during the winter, but I don't during the summer. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time that you've given us that we can learn more about your word and learn more about what you want to do, God, how you want to move in our lives. God, we just pray for our families. We pray for our friends, God. We just pray for blessings and protection and provision for them. We pray for their families, God. We pray for direction, your direction of truth for them. God, we just pray that you would give us boldness to go out and share your, your truths and share the gospel of Jesus with others. We just pray, God, that you would help us to be the hands and feet and the, the um, loving compassion of Jesus everywhere we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, y'all have an awesome night. I am a little bit sleepy. Then an awesome tomorrow, tomorrow Sunday. Should be here tomorrow night. I'm not sure. I have a meeting tomorrow after church. Anyway, much love and cyber hugs till we see you again, till I see you again. Good night. <laughs>